seen him butter chicken for breakfast. I just keep feeling these eyes on me and I look over and there's these few people like, what's that the guy? People were starting to recognize me eating my butter chicken. And that was pretty weird. Their Fool's Love song. They were unique as hell. The creativity on that song is amazing. Video crazy, beat was crazy, bars were crazy. But believe it or not, this is straight out of a bedroom computer in Howick. That's that beat, bro. Dun, 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 Y'all better come well equipped champagne caviar. Let me at the bar, take a sip. You know, comedic, but they could also be serious at the same time. It was pretty impactful, eh? Yeah. They were wearing all the new era caps, denim shorts, Air Force Ones. A couple of years ago, Steve from Waiuku met a South African kid called Yuri, and the two of them hit it off. Because they got number one too, right? I don't know what happens to those guys. Uh, kia ora, my name is Stevie McQueen Jr. I am, sorry, I'm really quite nervous. I'm Colossal from Misfits of Science. I've done an interview in like a million years. Um, did you want me to say anything else after that? You love me. All you underground cats go do them, but you're living on it for the mad cash. Bar cutting, spitting on tracks, no rhythm. You love me. It's like 2000 we met each other. I was working in a hip hop clothing store in Auckland. He had this like, this denim, this full denim suit with, with um, Timberlands on. He kind of kept coming in and bothering me and hanging around. I wanted his number. Because he was all, he, he all kind of Helen, Helen Steined out. And we just liked the clothes, like we love looking good. That's how the relationship got started, the, the bromance. Started making tracks and yeah, the rest did. is history. We still lived at home. Well, I did. This is like the very beginning of kind of like the bedroom producer. Be in mind, back then it was like dial up, just using the most basic stuff. You know, we were just in our room eating yum bars. Yum bars. Smoking weed. Smoke up in the alleyway. Pounding out music. Everyone was like, you know, out there getting their girlfriends and that sort of stuff. And I was just like, music is my girlfriend. I'm a very much like a cruise through life and like, oh, if this happens, oh, that's cool. But Yudi, from a young age, he was like, I wanna be a rapper. The whole time, just the vision. I always had this vision that I wanted this record deal. I guess it was that, that sort of silent confidence that I hadn't expressed to anyone except Steve. I felt like I was always, always driving that. And I'm like, oh yeah, cool, man, yeah, sweet as, yeah. You know, and like not really comprehending what that meant. Rather than being all cool and going to beat merchants and going through like the vinyl. We actually went to the warehouse. Let's go to the what if I did and check out the discount bin for CDs. Try to look for like some soul sample that's gonna stick. And then we, we played the Doris Day track and ding, 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 ding. You know, and then she's like, We just looked at each other like, oh shit. That is gonna get us known. Recognize these guys? What about now? <laughs> the song for TV with the big heads and the little bodies. The big heads. Big ass heads. Massive heads. The bubble heads. What's it? They had big heads, eh? Mm. That video had us shook. Like, damn. And I'm like, what the hell is this? It's super colorful, super different from everything else that was playing on the music channel at the time. Man, I definitely saw this song on Hot Hour. I remember the night the video was gonna premiere. And you know, we're sitting on Yudi's couch at his mum's flat. Pretty exciting. A little moldy boy from Waioki, like, is about to be on TV with his video. The show starts. <laughs> And then I played it and we're like, oh man, that's awesome, yeah, woohoo! And then it gets towards the end of the, the show. Cuts to Severe being like, this has never happened before. I had so many calls about that video. We were both like, perched. An overwhelming response to this, this video. The like, Yudi's mum's couch like, <gasps> So here it is again, fool's love. We've done it, we've made it. We got the live up in the half top shit. Ain't none of y'all matching personas I quit. Only concern would you be my all bands, fast trends, fake friends, how much cash they spend. At that moment, like Steve and I looked at each other. Real childlike uh, euphoria. And then I ran upstairs to my mum. And yeah, it was it was just crazy. I think she cooked us like a biryani afterwards, like celebration. That was it was really really awesome. Radio picked up on it, and then it quickly got to to number one. I was living my dream.
pretty much everybody's playing it now, maybe except like uh, 1ZB. Like when we first came out, there was a lot of kickback. You know, we were these guys out of the blue, out of nowhere. It's like, oh, who are these guys? You know, they haven't done their time or whatever. It was like it was literally two dudes in their room making beats and then all of a sudden we're on TV. The talk that was happening around the time, like, where are they from? Who are they? Who did they, who, what, what neighborhood did they come from? We never heard of these guys before. Like, we never seen them play gigs. Yeah, they came out of nowhere. And I just remember being like, who are these guys? Where are these guys from? Because it was so quick, you know, like going from like anonymity to like, Hey, you're that guy on TV. Or as people would put it, you're the white one. Yeah, moldy, but I'll go with the white one. That's all right. Seriously, what have you been doing for the last couple of years? Have you been working on new material and stuff? We released Fool's Love and we're like, oh, that's going to be one of the tracks on the album. And then, uh, then the success happened and they're like, well, we need the rest. What's the rest of the album? And we're like, uh, so we were never those guys that were just like agreed with it, going with the flow or that kind of stuff. It was always about making music that we want to make. Because we made Fool's Love and then every other track was just on some crazy shit. We created this crazy masterpiece in our minds. We were like, oh, this is amazing. But if you listen to it, Fool's Love sounds like nothing else on the album. And then people would get the CD home and go, oh, cool, man. The CD's, out, you know, the Misfit CD gets shit. And they listen to it and they're like, I don't know if they got enough love for it, but I was listening to it now and I'm like, man, if someone released this shit now, this shit would actually be huge. Oh, okay. Oh. This isn't something that's just created for commercial success. This was actually something that we love making. Maybe we could have made a, maybe one or two more maybe commercial viable tracks, but we, we weren't thinking that way. To our detriment, that's why like success after Fool's Love was the way it was. Of course, the, the fallout was, less success and kind of less free alcohol when you go anywhere. I just went into this kind of dark place with it. I just needed to find some inspiration again. They were ahead of the time, like legit ahead of the time. And I'm not scared to say that, like legit, they were ahead of the time. We did our thing. We like released this amazing album in my eyes, like number one, and, like we had good times. And then like, I was like, cool, that's enough for me, you know? I think it was at that point that I, I really kind of snapped out of it. This, it was my boy's dream, you know, like young little Yuri, like, I want to be a hip hop star, you know? And he was, he was a hip hop star and he had a number one and he like did all the stuff. We won awards, we toured New Zealand. We got to see a lot of places that, you know, a lot of people don't get to see. The song's relevant on many levels and they are relevant on many levels. That track came out in 2004, we're in 2021 and here we are talking about it. Every single person, even if they hated it, they knew that the bar had been raised. Like we need to listen to more Misfits. Like they released some crazy shit. I'm looking forward to when Misfits of Science makes a comeback, puts a mark back on Aotearoa South Pacific Hip Hop again. It's incredible just the relationships through the years that came from that time. Just the most beautiful time to be in an Aotearoa hip hop group and, and being on in that scene. You know, we became such a, a huge part of each other's lives. I was just riding, holding on to the cape of Super Yudi like up to the top, you know? I guess when you look back on your life and you go, that moment was when everything sort of just felt like you're living this life that's way bigger than you. Same for the two double O three. My name, my shit is